have a word from the Lord, and amen, we're going to be teaching. Go to 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, and uh, I want you to join me in a conversation that King Jehoshaphat, amen, which was the king of Judah, is having a conversation with the Lord. Uh, because uh, Judah had come up under attack. There was three major armies that had rallied together that God had spared. Sometime God will spare people and preserve their lives, and when they get on their feet, they forget about what God had done. And these three countries or nation had forgot about what God had done for them. And now we want to pick it up here, Sister Deborah. I want everybody to follow me in scripture. Amen. That's in 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter. And I want Sister Deborah to pick it up at verse number Five, and we're going to read down to verse number 12. Amen. We're reading from the NIV. Then Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah in Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord in the front of the new courtyard and said, Lord, the God of our ancestors, are you not the God who is in heaven? Now, he asks, he says, now, what had happened when they came up on the attack by these three major armies, Jehoshaphat declared a time of prayer and fasting. And all of the, the children of the region of Judah, they came together around the new temple. And he says uh, to the Lord our God, he says, God who is in the heaven, you are ruler over all the kingdoms and the what? Come on, y'all read the Bible with me. God is the, he's the God ruler over all kingdoms of the what? Amen. Meaning that he's over America right now, isn't he? Amen. It says power and might are in your what? Amen. Hand and no one can what? Withstand. Withstand. All right, keep reading, Sister Deborah. Our God did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel? Uh-huh. And give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend. They have lived in it. Keep reading. They have lived in it and have built in it a sanctuary for your name. Uh-huh. Saying, if calamity comes upon us, whether the sword of judgment or plague or famine... We will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name and will cry out to you in our distress. All right. And, and you will hear us and save us. But now, here are men from Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whose territory you would not allow Israel to invade when they came from Egypt. Uh-huh. So they turned away from them and did not destroy them. Yes. See how they are repaying us by coming to drive us out of the possession you gave us as an inheritance? All right, now pay close attention to verse number 12. Our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. All right, now go with me over to Psalms 121. And verse number one and two. That's Psalms 121 and verse number one and two. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Amen. Today, if I could use as a subject, I want to talk on this subject. When... You don't know what to do. When you don't know what to do. Or better than that, look at somebody and say, 
what to do when you don't know what to do. By show of hand, how many people have ever been in a place that you just didn't know what to do? You face a situation or scenario that was just totally out of your ability to figure it out, to look through it. It was like now your back is against the wall and now I just don't know what to do. I believe that if you have not encountered that moment in your life, you keep living. You're going to face a time in your life when you're going to be face to face with a scenario that you really don't know what to do. But I submit to you because you don't know what to do, that doesn't mean that God hadn't already got a plan and a strategy. Sometime God let us run out of plans. He let us run out of ideas. He let us run out of things so we can totally look to him. And today, amen, in our text, we find that King Jehoshaphat was in a situation where his back was against the wall. He was facing a dilemma like he had never faced before. Amen. Jehoshaphat was the king of Judah. He was the king of the, uh, of the northern tribe, amen, of Israel. But yet uh, he was facing something he had never faced. There was something going on in his region that caused him to be at a place of odds. I don't know if you've ever been there, but I face situation, and I think we have all dealt with things where, like, how did we get through this? What's the, what's the answer around this? And today we want to look closely at some principles in which uh, King Jehoshaphat applied in the midst of this because I will tell you that our God is a good God. Amen. And one thing that I do know, if you will acknowledge him as a good God, God will come through every time because David said, I would have lost my mind if I would not have believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So whether you are this morning stuck in a situation as if you are not able to get over it, or maybe you are faced with some depression or some, amen, discouragement, I've got good news for you this morning. I got good news because you have a God that is willing to help. Amen. Because that's why David said, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. And he said, my help cometh from the Lord. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Because, amen, I believe that Jehoshaphat a man was a real man like you and I. Although he was the king of Israel, amen, over Judah, he was still a man, amen, that looked to God like you and I must look to God. Now, so what I want to do here is I, I want to look here closely and pull out some principles that I believe that will help us in the time that we're living in because I believe that we're seeing more days where we don't know what to do than days we do know what to do. Right. Amen. So I, I believe that we've got to begin to look to God. Now, why would you look to God uh, in, in these times? Because look at Romans for a moment. Let's go to Romans the 15th chapter and verse number four. And let me kind of slow my pace down a little bit because I really want to teach this so you can get it, amen, what to do when you don't know what to do, amen. Now, look what Romans uh, the 15th chapter and verse number four said. 
It says, for whatever was written in former days was written for our what? That means that whatever we're faced with today, there are some instructions that have already been written and people have walked through that will help us through what we're going through today. So he says, what, whatsoever was written uh, in the former days was written for our what? Instruction that through what? Endurance and through the encouragement of the scripture, you might have hope. God is saying, regardless to what you're facing in life today, there is some instruction that will teach you how to endure and then encourage you even through the scripture. Are y'all following me? That's why even Galatians, the sixth chapter and verse number nine says, and let us not become weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. In other words, God said, I got you. Look at your neighbor and say, God said, I got you. But he needs you to trust him. Come on. Glory be to God. Because this is what I know, Bobby. This is what I know for sure. God's timing to get us through things is not my time. In other words, I want God to get me through it today. But God said, if I get you through it today, then what I'm trying to teach you and what you're going through, you won't ever learn it. So I'm going to let you stay in a little bit longer because there's some things I want to teach you in the midst of it. And when I deliver you out of it, you won't just come out of it, but you'll come out of it with some instruction on how to get through everything else you face in life. Too many of us won't out of what we're going through right now as if what we're going through doesn't have a lesson to teach us some things. Come on, God's trying to teach us through everything that we face in life. Come on, somebody. So God's timing is different because, watch this, Jehoshaphat was a man that was devoted to God. What do you mean he was devoted to God? Go back to the 17th chapter. Go back to 2 Chronicles, the 17th chapter. And uh, I, I want to work my way into this 20th chapter, but back over in chapter 17, listen, I want to pull up the first three verses. Come on, can we go back quickly? Uh, 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 audio ministry, video ministry, give me that, and I'll read it so it's there for the sake of time. Amen. It says, Jehoshaphat, his son, it says, Jehoshaphat, his son succeeded him as king and strengthened himself against Israel. He stationed troops in all the fortified city and Judah and put garrison in Judah and in the towns of Ephraim that his father Asia had captured. Look at verse number three. It says the Lord was with who? Watch this. One of the things that got Jehoshaphat through what he got through, although he had to go through what he had to go through, he knew God was with him. See, watch this. Even when you're facing scenarios and situations like you have never faced, one thing for sure that will bring you through it every time is knowing that God is with you. It says, listen, it says, it says the Lord was with Jehoshaphat. Why? Why? Because he followed the ways of his father, David, before him. He did not consult the bell. In other words, Jehoshaphat never compromised his integrity in the midst of changing times and changing situation. He never compromised. Why is that so vital? What we cannot do, folks, is doing this new place we're at in life. This is not the time to compromise. You've got to be steadfast. You've got to be unmovable. 
because I promise you, if Jehoshaphat would have compromised his integrity before God, those three armies would have got the best of him. But because he took a stance in the midst of adversities and situation, God was with him. I'm saying, folks, that if you stand and you haven't done all that you know how to do, God will stand up in you and see you through whatever you're facing. You know, I'm not boasting. I'm not boasting, and, 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 and I'm not a respectful person. But somebody asked me the other day, how many times you have had COVID since the COVID? I said, not one time. Amen. Hadn't tested positive, not one time. Uh, and, and I'm not boasting, but I know God is with me, and I know he's with you. Even if you've been tested positive, God is still with you, and God will see you through it. I'm saying you, we've got to make sure that we don't compromise or quit or give in. Notice, notice, notice. And I'm, and I'm moving over to the seventh chapter, but I want to show you, I mean the 20th chapter, but I want to show you something else. Skip on over to verse number six. Skip on. Now, well, look at four. It says, but he sought God, the God of his father, and follow his commandment rather than the praxis of the what? Israelite. That's verse number four. Amen. He says, verse number five, the Lord established his kingdom under his control and all Judah brought gifts to Jehoshaphat so that he was what? Had great wealth and honor. Verse number six, this is what I want you to see. But it says his heart was devoted. I want you to underline that. Not just your life will never be devoted to God if your heart is not. In other words, devotion towards God starts in your what? Heart. Not in your head. Too many of us say we're devoted to God. We're devoted to God as long as we're in a God environment. But the reality, when you're devoted to God, you'll be devoted when there's nobody but you and God there. Now, he was devoted to God. Now, now, for the sake of time, let's go over to the 20th chapter. Now, I want to pick it up because I've I got some principles I want to bring out here, amen, that I believe will help us, amen, in the time that we're living in. Go ahead, Sister Deborah, start reading that verse number one. After this, the Moabites and Ammonites with some of the Munites came to wage war against Jehoshaphat. All right, now... After this, in other words, after he had gotten established, after he was devoted to God, after God was with him, he had five, ma three major armies that come up against him to wage war. In other words, there was a direct attack against him. How many, how many by show of hand have been directly attacked by the enemy? In other words, sometimes the enemy don't attack your household. He attacked you. And this was a direct attack against Jehoshaphat. Uh-huh. Now, so watch this. Watch this. Next verse. Some people came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you from Edom from the other side of the Dead Sea. Uh-huh. It is already in Hazan Tamar, that is in Gedi. Uh-huh. Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire oh, of the Hold up. Let's, let's back up because we missed something. Amen. We missed something. Let's go back to verse number three uh, and pull up the new king because I want to show you something here. Yeah, yeah. I want to show you something. This is so important that y'all catch this. Amen. Pull up the new king, please. Amen. New King James. It says, amen, verse number three, it says, and Jehoshaphat did what? L look up here for a moment. Most people will tell you if you're Christian and you get in fear, you're not in faith. But here's Jehoshaphat was a man devoted to God. A man that was a man after God's own heart. When he got this news, his first response was what? I'm trying to help somebody because sometimes, Pam, when we face what we face, the first thing that hit us is what? Yeah. And people say, well, you must not be in faith. No, 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 no. 
Because every one of us, when you get news that catch you off guard, your natural response is going to be fear. I need you to see that because you're not out of God's will when you get in fear initially. In other words, your fear ought to cause you to respond in faith. See, he feared, but his response, Bobby, was faith. See, fear ought to move you into a place of faith when fear shows up. Now, so, 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 watch this. So, number one, number one, number one, let me give you a principle. I'm going to teach you seven principles. I want to bring up about seven principles. Amen. Although he was the king of Judah, amen, and he was devoted to God, and he followed God wholeheartedly, his response to negative news or adversity was he got in fear. But watch this. Here's my first principle. When fear hits you, choose faith over it. When fear hits your life, choose faith over it. In other words, when fear come, when fear came to him, he responded in faith. He responded because, watch this, when you're faced with adversities, and challenges that you didn't know anything about it, your natural response is fear. But if you are in faith, then faith will overpower that fear. Come on, somebody. So his first response, amen, because we are all human and we have the potential of getting in fear, but we have to move from fear over to faith. Yes. Yes. Second Timothy, Second Timothy 1 and 7 say, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and of a sound mind. Let me tell you what happened when you harbor fear. Fear, when you harbor it, it ignites other negative emotions. And now these emotions are getting ready to take you further away from God's will. So you don't even allow yourself to entertain fear for any length of time. I'm saying when it shows up, be willing to unpack it and get in it over in faith. Are y'all seeing this? Amen. Because we have attended, we, we all have attended uh, uh, to give way to different emotions. And if we don't take control over those emotions, they will move us away to fear. It's because fear has gotten into your eye gate, ear gate, mouth gate. And if you don't denounce it, Amen. It will begin to stimulate negative emotions. And now you'll start believing the worst about a situation instead of a favorable outcome. Are you following me? Yeah. So what we have to do is guard our heart. The Bible says guard your heart. Not talking about this. It's not talking about that heart. It's talking about your spirit. Guard what you let get in your spirit because we all have three gates into our spirits. Our ear gate, our eye gate, our mouth gate is attached to our spirit. And whatever I let get in there, now it gets in my spirit and now I find myself responding out of emotion, out of fear instead of faith. So I've got I've got to stand up. I've got to stand up. We, we need to stand up in faith over what we feel. I may feel something, but I don't have to give way to what I feel. That's right. That's right. Stop giving way to what you feel because you will have feelings, but don't give way to it. Notice, go back to the scripture. Let's go back to the scripture. Amen. Back to the scripture, uh, verse number three again. And, and I want it from the New King 
uh, new king, it says here, go ahead. And Jehoshaphat feared. All right, he feared, uh-huh. And set himself to seek the Lord. All right, instead of letting fear linger, right. he moved from fear right. to setting himself to seek God. In other words, he didn't let the fear stay there. He moved from fear to seeking God. Next time fear show up in your life and it's trying to linger, go ahead and seek God. Go ahead and seek God. Go ahead and seek God. Come on. Because the Bible says, amen, watch this, we can grow our faith during these difficult times, developing unshakable confidence in God. Because the Bible said, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. And it says, he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So what we've got to do is understand there's one thing that pleased God and that is faith. Fear can never please God. So Jehoshaphat didn't let fear linger. He moved over to a place of, watch this, pleasing God. See, God works by faith, and he rewards by faith. I said God works by faith, and he, re he's, he rewards by faith. Now, I'm about to offend some, I'm about to offend some people, Ellis Austin, when I make my next statement. And I'm not trying to offend you, but I'm going to say what God has put in my heart. And that is, he's not moved by tears. If God is moved by tears, there will be not one person with a problem in their lives. God is not moved by tears or circumstances. He's moved when we respond in faith. If your tears are not moving you destiny over into faith, then you got to guard your heart. Your tears ought to move you over in where? Faith. Amen. Glory be to God. Because what is faith? Faith is believing God that he will do what he said he will do. Faith is believing God that he will do what God says he will do. Faith is trusting God when you don't understand. I said faith is trusting God when you don't understand. The reality was King Jehoshaphat didn't understand. Watch this. He didn't understand why these three armies was rallying against him. He knew this, that they were more powerful naturally than he and his whole army was. And he knew that if God didn't intervene, he was going to be overpowered by the situation. So what he did was he moved from fear to faith. Watch this, write this down. I, I, when God showed me this one, faith is taking yourself out of your own care and putting your, putting your care in God's care. Faith is taking yourself out of your own care. Because some of us believe we can take care of ourselves better than God can take care of us. But faith is taking yourself out of your own care and putting yourself in the care of your heavenly father. See, faith is never believing with the head. Faith is believing with the heart. Faith is never believing with the head. It's believing with the heart. See, the challenges of life stretches us. And the more we are stretched and we stay in faith, our faith grows. Your faith grows when you are stretched. Sandra, when you think about all that you have had to walk through over the years, girl, your faith has been stretched because there is no way human possible. A lot of people will still be given God to move in faith and not fear and, and doubt and unbelief. I, I'm telling you what to do when you don't know what to do. I, I'm talking about what to do when you don't know what to do. Watch this. Write this down. When fear comes, you must keep faith over what you feel. When fear comes, you must keep 
faith over what you feel. Because when fear comes, fear comes, it's going to ignite certain emotions and feelings. I've got to keep faith on what's, what I'm feeling right now. Because if I, if I release what I'm feeling, it'll overpower my faith and now it'll have me moving out of character. Are, are y'all seeing this? So I've got to do this. We have to let our, we have to let the spirit of faith rise up on the inside of us like Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat had the potential, a possibility of letting fear run its course, but he let, he did not let fear run its course. He took control over his feelings, his emotion, and he got in faith. Let me ask you a question. What caused him to move from fear to faith? What caused him to move from fear to faith? You get a chance, read chapter 17, chapter 18, and the latter part of chapter 19. One thing that Jehoshaphat did, he taught the word of God. Matter of fact, look back to the look back quickly to the 19th chapter since we're there. Amen. And you'll see, look, look, uh, it says in verse number four in 19, Jehoshaphat lived in Jerusalem. And he went out again amongst the people from Beersheba to the hill country of Ephraim and turn them back to who? The Lord, the God of their what? Father. And he began to command them to get into the word. In other words, when you are meditating on the word or standing on the word every day, it'll move you from fear over back to faith. What, what moves me, I face fear like anybody else fe- face it. But what moves me back over in the faith is my meditating on the word daily. The word on the inside of me overpower my fears. Give me for a moment. I don't know if it's just me. I, just me and you talking. But I find myself being attacked. Look like the older I get now, the more the enemy attacked me, trying to kill me and trying to get me to believe a lot of unbelief and uh, attacking my mind. It's like it's intensified. At 83, do you encounter that? Absolutely. Absolutely. So you mean to tell me The enemy is constantly fighting you and your mind. Absolutely. Every almost every day. Almost daily. Almost daily. And and nightly. nightly. Folks, this is not the time to walk around casual and letting stuff just flow through your mind and you don't arrest it and challenge it. You've got to you've got to take authority over your thought life and not letting stuff linger because the enemy will have a field day and destroy you. Watch this. Watch this. In 2 Corinthians, don't go there. It says in the 10th chapter verses 5, it says casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God in your life. In other words, if you don't capture thoughts that come to your mind, thoughts will capture you. Give me a dollar. My, my daughter and my grand, my daughter is a single parent. My granddaughter, she's raising her almost 13-year-old daughter. Well, last, was that Sunday night? Last Sunday night? Last Sunday night, some people drove into their neighborhood, brand new neighborhood, where they live at. 
and they shot up, shooting throughout the neighborhood, hit several houses, shot through windows. I think you all live in that neighborhood as well. And watch this. My granddaughter was devastated. That little trauma, she said, we don't, Papa, we don't live in a safe neighborhood. Papa, she was just bleeding over. So the first thing I did, I said, hold up, Sarah. Don't let your mind run away with you. I said, capture those thoughts. Bring them into the captivity, to the obedience. She took her, put in bed with her, began to reinforce it. Because I don't care how young or how old, when you face some trauma in your life, if you don't capture it, it will run rapid in, away from you, folks. So again, Jehoshaphat, amen, had to deal with what you and I are dealing with. So watch this. See, if you find yourself responding out of your emotions and your feeling and in fear and worry, then you need to figure out what you're feeding on every day. Wow. Look up here for a moment. If you've got more fear going on, more worry, anxiety, you've got to check out what you're feeding yourself every day. Watch this. Go to St. Luke. St. Luke 6 and 45. St. Luke 6 and 45. Amen. And it says in St. Luke 6 and 45, it says, for out of the abundant of the heart, the mouth speaks. Whatever you're feeding yourself in abundant, it's coming out of your mouth. It says a good man brings a good thing out of the good store up in his what? Heart. An evil man brings evil things out of the evil stores up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Whatever you are feeding on every day is going to come out when you face trauma. Going to come out when you face opposition. So that's why you've got to feed on the Word of God. I submit to you, the reason Jehoshaphat was able to go right back in faith, he was feeding on the Word of God. Uh, are y'all seeing that? Amen. Because the mouth, write this principle down. The mouth always speaks what the heart is full of. Write that principle down. The mouth always speaks what the heart is full of. What's in your, what is your heart full of? In other words, what is your heart full of? Here's my second principle. My second principle. Faith always seek God and inquire of the Lord. Faith always seek God and inquire of the Lord. You know, some people, watch this. Faith always seek God and acquire of him. But you know what some people do, Yolanda? They, they talk with everybody else about their problem before they go to God. Why are we talking with other people about our problem before we talk with God about our problem? See, we need to train ourselves to talk to God before we talk with others about our problem. Is there anything wrong with talking to others about what we're dealing with? No. But I talk with them after I've talked with God because People will tell you what they feel, where God is going to tell you the promise over the problem. God's going to give you a promise over the problem. Are y'all seeing this? See, 
It's okay to talk with other people, but not leaving God out of it. Proverbs 3 and 6 says, acknowledge God in all of your ways and he will direct your path. In other words, I'm going to acknowledge God before I talk with my daughter, my wife, or anybody else. There's stuff that I've dealt with over the years, Ellis Austin, and I know you have too. You love Mike, Big Daddy. Where's Big Daddy? Wave your hand. But there's some things you, you talk to God before you even talk with Big Daddy about. Because you don't want to stress or worry Big Daddy out. And you got enough confidence and trust in God. And Big Daddy just embraced that. Genesis tell me after the fact, she said, why didn't you tell me about it? I said, you would have stressed that that was in front of me. You would have. So I needed to talk with God about it. And now when I come back to a Bobby, I'm coming back with an answer, a solution, not something. Because watch this. Some people don't know how to take negative news and put it before God and leave it there and go with their lives. Some people take negative news and they walk around and they wear the negative news they have got. Well, I'm telling you how to, how to come through things when you don't know what to do. See, remember, we have an open invitation to come to God himself. He said, if any man likes wisdom, let him what? Ask to me. God is saying, instead of talking to everybody else, he said, always seek me first, acquire me. That's what Jehoshaphat did. How, how do you know that? Look at it. Go back, Sister Deborah, and read verse number three again. Chapter 20. And let's read down to verse number four. Verse number five again. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord and from all the cities of Judah they came to seek the Lord. Then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem. Oh, I'm sorry. At the temple of the Lord in the front of the new courtyard. Then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah in Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God of our fathers. Stop. Notice what he did. He began to seek God, didn't he? And inquired in, in the Lord's presence. So this is... This is what we do because let me tell you what God will do. Can I let you in on something? Amen. If you're see first, he will expose the plot and the scheme of the enemy. You all remember in 2 Kings, the sixth chapter, when, uh, when uh, Elijah was in the valley of Dothan, uh, the Bible says that the king of Syria thought he had a spy in the camp, because every time he, he come up with a plan, a, a strategy to attack Israel, right. God will let the prophet know, and he'd go tell the king. He, here's the thing. When you, you're acquiring of the Lord, God will show you things before anybody else knows them. God will show you stuff. I kid you not. This is the God heaven truth. Lisa, I'm not lying. I was in the hospital back in 1985. I was stationed at Fort Seal, Oklahoma, and I was there temporarily. I, I've had two surgeries in my life, and that was one of them. And uh, anyway, I got admitted to the hospital. I was having this severe pain, yeah, on my left side. And it was so, I mean, I was crying. I was, uh, I was in training there. And they ran tests all Friday evening, all day Saturday. They could never figure out. So about 3 o'clock Sunday morning, full day, I was in prayer. I said, God, I can't handle this pain anymore. And I don't know where it's coming from. The doctors don't know what it is. Just as plain as I'm talking to y'all, I heard the Lord say, tell them it's your penance. I called one of the nurses. They came down. They did their tests. They took me into surgery. Within hours, God showed me what they didn't, what they couldn't locate. In other words, God will show you things 
When you acquire the Lord, when you seek God, he'll show you things. He'll show you solutions. Some years ago, some years ago, I think it was in the early two, 2000, uh, Regina, I don't know if we had the health care minute we were checking, but my sugar uh, was running high back in those years. And, uh, you know, my doctor told me there's a potential they were going to have to put me on some medication for it. And I was praying about it. I said, Lord, I don't want to take shots of medication. He says, it was like God said, I need you to remove this from your diet. He showed me to list the foods that I need to remove from my diet. And I did that for one year. And I've not had any challenges with mine. In other words, when you are acquiring of the Lord, God will show you things. Because who knows you better than God himself? Is this too practical? So, so here, so God will even expose the plan and the schemes and the strategy of the enemy. Number three, number three, faith put emphasis on you're all powerful, you rule over all the nations and all the armies that want to come up against us, you are greater than them. In other words, he he took the emphasis off of him and his ability to defeat the enemy and put it on God. So faith always put emphasis on God and not self. Write this down. Write this down. We have to take the emphasis off of us so that God will overpower Everything that we face, we have to take the emphasis off of us and put it on God so that he will overpower everything that we face. Because if Hosephat and Judah was facing something that they have never faced before, because watch it, the Bible says in Romans 8 and 31, it says if God be for you, he'll be more than the whole world against you. Somebody shout, God's for me. See, you've got to know that God is for you all the time, not sometime. See, it's not about what you can't, but it's about what God can. I said it's not about what you can't, but it's about what God can in other words, we have to know that God can do all things. The Bible says all things are possible to those that believe. So we have to believe in God. Number four, number four, here's my four principle. Amen. Faith prays with boldness and authority. Faith always prays with boldness and authority. Now, as Jehoshaphat began to pray, he began to pray with boldness and authority. Listen to this prayer. I want y'all to listen again. Let's go back to the text. Amen. He prayed with, amen, boldness and authority. Now, let's go back to verse number seven, and we're going to pick it up again, and we want to, uh, and guys in the back, yeah, I was about to say, can you pull up the new King James for me? Amen. And pick it up at verse number seven. And go ahead and start reading there, Sister Deborah. Our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend forever? And they dwell in it and have built you a sanctuary in it for your name, saying, uh -huh. if disaster comes upon us, sword, judgment, pestilence, or famine, we will stand before this temple and in your presence for your name is in this temple. Stop. Notice what he says. You said if disaster come upon us, swear, swords, judgment, pestilence, family, we could come and stand before you in this temple in your presence. Uh, for your name is in this temple. And cry out to you out of our affliction and you will hear us and save you. That's boldness, is it? Yeah, yeah. In other words, saying back to God what God has already said. 
let, let me help you. What is prayer? Prayer is simply saying back to God what God has already said to us. Because God is not a man that he should lie or the son of man that he should repent. That's your baby? What's your name, precious? Alil, can you stand for a moment? Mom, if you don't mind, can you stand? Aaliyah, what's the last thing your mama promised to do for you? But she makes you some promises, don't you? And when she makes you promise, what do you do? You come to her and you say, Mama, you said, <laughs> don't you? And Mama look at you and Mama's, Mama can't deny because Mama did say that. <laughs> So now mama become obligated to do what mama said she would do for you. And, and the more and the more she make you promise, the, more, the better you feel about coming to mom when you have need and asking mom to help, don't you? That's the same way with God. See, when you find out what God has promised, you ought to come to him and talk with him about it. Because he wouldn't have never told you he'd do this if he didn't really mean to do it. God is not a waste of words. Uh, are y'all seeing that? So all he was doing was coming back and talking to God about what God had already promised him. And he believed that. He believed that. Uh huh. Read on, Sister Deborah. And now, here are the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir whom you would not let Israel invade when they came out of the land. Of Stop. Here's three countries. When Israel passed through their land, Israel was getting ready to destroy them. And God said, don't touch them. Don't touch them. Just walk through their land. Don't even touch their harvest. Just walk through their land. In other words, God spared these three countries. And now what they do is they're going to come out and come up against God's people. Amen. After God spared them. And he said, but they turned from them and did not destroy them. Verse number 11. Here they are rewarding us by coming to throw us out of your possession, which you have given us to inherit. See, all he's saying to God is what God had already said to them. Uh-huh. Oh, our God. Will you not judge them? For we have no power against this. Stop. All right, all right. God, will you not judge in this situation? Because we have no power against these great multitudes. You've got to be able to look at God and say, God, this thing is too big for me. I can't defeat this thing. I can't overcome this thing. But you can. Diabetes is too big. Cancer is too big. High blood pressure is too big. Tumor is too big. Kidney failure is too big. Whatever it is, come and talk to God about it. When you do that, you're showing God you got more confidence in his ability to do it than your ability. Pride with many of us, we believe that we can overcome this thing apart from God. But I tell you, I'm reminded of David. David said, I once was young, but I'm now old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor I see beggars praying. God said, if I be for you, I'll be more than the whole world against you. You got to know that God is working in your behalf. But he said, listen what he says. But we have no... Hold it, hold, hold it. Let me work it. He says, nor do we know what to do. In other words, we don't know what to do. You can sit here like you know what to do. But I'm here today to tell you that you don't really know what to do. That's why we've got to talk to God about everything and anything and tell him I just don't know. 
Yeah, I got a degree, but I just don't know. Yes, I got money in the bank, but I just don't know. I've got this going on, but I just don't know. I'm talking about, I'm talking about when you're faced, when you're faced with a situation when you just don't know what to do. Amen. I don't know about you, but there's times you just don't know and you need to talk to God about it. Tell him about everything. Stop pretending. Stop faking it and talk to God. Talk to him. Tell him all about it. He already know, but he wants you to come. I'm reminded of Hebrews, the fourth chapter and verse 16. It says, let us Therefore, come boldly before the throne of grace that we may attain mercy and find grace and find grace and find grace. Somebody said grace to help. Look at somebody and say, I am that I am by the grace of God. It's not about me, but it's about the grace. Hallelujah. 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 Jeremiah, Jeremiah 33 and 3 says, God says, call upon me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you did not know. God says, God said, if you'll talk to me, I'll show you some things you didn't even know. He said, but if you want to try to do it on your own, you keep stumbling throughout life. But if you'll just come and talk to me about it. One might say, talk to God. Go to Isaiah 43 and 26. Isaiah, King James, King James. Isaiah 43 and verse 26. Pam, it says, I love what it says here. It says, put me in remembrance. God is saying, not that I don't know, but I need you to put me, that's what he said, put me in remembrance. He says, let us contend together. State your case that you may be acquitted He, 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 he said, put me in remembrance. That, that's what I would tell your daughter, put you in remembrance. See, God is saying, put me in remembrance. State your case. God said, God said, don't be a punk about it when you pray. Just, just come in and talk to me. Don't be, don't be, don't be whippy when you come. He, 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 he said, already know. So you ain't got to be a wimp about it. Just come over here and talk to me. That's why he said, come boldly. Come boldly. Come with some confidence. Come with your chest sticked out. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Look at your neighbor and say, we need to get some backbone when it come around to praying to God. We need to get some backbone when it come around to praying to God. Thank you.
You talking to your daddy. You don't need to come in there. Please, Jesus. Uh -uh. He don't want you to please. He just wants you to come boldly. You know, every once in a while, some of y'all want to pull them out. And, and please, I'm just illustrating and I'm not trying to criticize. But you don't need to get out on one left knee. Say, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, please stop by here. I need you to stop. No, you don't need to be pleading with him. He already here. He's already here. You don't need to ask him to come. He's already here. You just need to talk to him. Why, why are you asking him to stop by when he's already here? He said, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. I'll be a very present help in times of trouble. He's right here. Number five. Number five. Amen. Oh, I'm finna go there in a minute. Number five, amen, faith has humility. In other words, faith always has humility. And watch this. Let's pick it up. Amen. Come on. Can you pull up the scripture for me? All right. I need you to go back to Second Chronicles and pick it up at verse number 13. Come on. New King James. Watch this. We're about to take it home. Amen. But I just want to read it. It says, now all Judah with the little ones, their wives and their children stood before the Lord. Come on. It says, then the spirit of the Lord came upon Jehezer, amen, the son of Zacharias and the son of Benjamin and the son of Jesse. in the midst of the assembly. Come on. And he said, listen, all you Judah of the inhabitants of Jerusalem, you king of Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor be dismayed because of this great multitude. He says the battle, the battle is not your battle. The battle is not yours. Look at somebody said ain't your battle, but it's God's battle, and He'll fight for you. I need you to see this. Now, read the next verse. Tomorrow. He said, tomorrow, go down against them, and they will surely come up by the ascent of Zion, and you will find them at the end of the brook. They're forth in the wilderness of Jeruah. Come on. And then he said, you ha, Look at that. You will not need to, to fight in the battle. The battle ain't yours. God says you don't need to. Listen what it said. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourself. Hold up. I'm about to blow your mind. 
What does he mean by position yourself? I submit to you to position yourself is to take up a position of praise and worship. It is to get into a position of praising God. It's get down, worship God. Do you not know God can do more in your worship and in your praise than you trying to fight a battle on your own? In other words, your position is to just start praising God. He said, position yourself. I need everybody to get on your feet. Move that for a moment. Move that podium. He says, position yourself and stand still and see the hands or see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid or be dismayed for tomorrow go out against them for the Lord is with you. I'm prophesizing over somebody. God said, when you wake up tomorrow, just go out and praise him and worship him because the battle ain't yours. Matter of fact, if you think I'm lying, watch this. Next verse. I'm going to show you what they did. We're going to illustrate it. We're getting ready to illustrate it. And Jehoshaphat bowed his knee head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord. And they did what? Here's what they didn't do. They didn't take the situations. They didn't take the matters upon their own any longer. Amen. They took up a position. To praise and worship God. Watch this verse number. Next verse. It says. Next verse. It, or it says. Then the Levites. I need the praise team to get in the middle. Come on all my praise team. Come on all my praise team. Get in that middle out. If you're on the praise team. Come get in the middle. Y'all bring your mic if you got a mic. If you ain't just follow somebody, got a mic. Come on, quickly, come on. Stand right there. Go back a little ways because I need y'all to march. We got to have some march, right marching music. All right. It says, get, go ahead and give them the mic if they, if they don't have it then. It says, then the Levites of the children of Korbites and the children of Korahite stood up they stood up and they did what now what I need y'all back there to do is start praising God come on start praising Hallelujah, God Hallelujah, God we give you the glory God we exalt your they stood up and they praised God alright now watch this watch this next verse and this is what I need y'all to say so they rose early in the morning and they went out into the wilderness of Kota. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and the inhabitant of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe in your prophet and so shall you prophet. The next verse. And it says, And when they had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and, they, and who should praise the beauty of holiness. And they went out before the army. Here it is. This is all I need y'all to say. Praise ye the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Praise, praise ye the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Praise ye the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. Praise ye the Lord. Just go around for the congregation. Mercy endures forever. Praise ye the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. Praise ye the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. Praise ye the Lord, 
Deborah next verse. Watch what happened. Now when they began, oh, go ahead. Now when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. Listen, what the listen, 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 what happened? As they were praising and worshiping God, all three of the armies that was getting ready to attack them turn on each other and destroyed each other instead of Israel because the battle wasn't there but the law. I submit to you. I submit to you all. Come here, Ellis Austin. I submit we're getting ready to enter into a season where we've been stuff that has been coming against you. This is what I hear the Lord says. Stuff that's been coming against us going to turn around and destroy itself. God says a lot of things that you've been faced with, instead of it further attacking you, it's going to destroy itself. It's going to be dried up from the roots. Get ready. As you begin to praise God, you're going to get ready to see the miraculous at work in your life. In other words, I believe God's getting ready to do some supernatural things. Come on, pull your mic off and talk to us about it. God has been saying that it's so important to hear him in this next season because the shift is going to happen so fast. And he's going to do things that it's going to be a suddenly season. It's going to be a now breakthrough season. And when he says shift, you got to be willing to shift. But you got to be listening to what he says and do it exactly how he says because there's no room for compromising. Because whatever he says, it's surely coming to pass. And as you said, even the broken about no dorobosa in the discouraged about to rosa got a shifting about otter about say or about say he rebuking the enemy for the not about say it put to the basa even for the ones that the abosha he said he seen the tears out to rosa make that a boy he had the goals and if you can believe one more time but the basa even as you prophesied this morning if you could dream one more time or about say one more time, God say, go again. Believe again. He said, ask him again. He said, seek him again. He said, trust him again. And watch what he's getting ready to do. He's going to do it so fast. So suddenly. He said, what you thought. You said, he said, what you thought he was getting ready to do. He's going to do it so fast. And he's going to cause such an end to overtake him. My time, what looked like a deficit is now going to be a surplus. It's going to be an overwhelming, overcoming, now blessing that I say that people will know that it was God. They'll know it wasn't you, but they will know that it was God. Now, I need everybody to lift your hands and come in agreement with that prophetic word. Amen. There's a shift and it's going to overtake it, but you've got to do exactly what God has said do. However he said do it, you do it that way. Don't compromise. And watch God do a supernatural thing in your life. 